Hello again folks, so this is my second video on uh, hypothesis tests for the binomial distribution um, and in this one we're going to look at how we use critical regions uh, in what we call lower tailed tests. Um, so we're going to use the same example that I used in my introductory video uh, where we've got a spinner uh, that is spun 20 times and a, a green comes up twice um, and what we want to do is test whether the spinner is in fact biased against getting a green. All right, and as I mentioned in my last video, we always need a significance level, often 5%. So in this question, we're told to use a 5% significance level. Okay, uh, so first thing we have to do is decide what our variable is. So the variable, the random variable in this case, uh, X is the number of green results. And Next thing, we always have to write down what our hypotheses are. So if you remember, we said that the null hypothesis is just the default state. In this case, we would assume that the spinner is fair, so P uh, is equal to a quarter. The alternative hypothesis, denoted H1, um, is what we suspect might be the case. In this case, that the spinner is biased against green, i.e., the probability of getting green is lower than a quarter. And then the next thing we always have to do is write down what the distribution is of our random variable, assuming that the null hypothesis is true. So we said in the last video that in this situation it's clearly binomial. It might be green or it might not be. There are 20 uh, spins altogether, so a maximum number of greens. Uh, assuming that the null hypothesis is true, which we always do, then our P is a quarter. Okay, so they are always the first three steps. Um, we're now going to go back to this graph that we looked at before. And if you remember, we said that the critical region is going to be a set of values of X. Now for this one, our critical region would be very small values of x because we're looking for to show that getting a green is very unlikely, so very few num uh, few greens. Uh, we also talked about the significance level, and for this example here, we were given the significance level of 5%, and that tells us that the probabilities of all of the uh, values uh, in our critical region they have to add up to less than 5%, less than 0 0.05. Um, so what we're wanting here is a critical region where the probability that X is less than or equal to some value uh, has to be less than 0 0.05. And hopefully you recognize that with this distribution and this sort of problem, we can use our calculator to work out the answer. So we're going to have a go. Uh, oh, sorry, a couple of other things. This value that is the highest in this case, the highest value in the critical region, that's called the critical value. So what we need to do is use our calculator uh, to find the value of x where the probability that x is less than this value is less than 0.05. So we're going to look at using the Casio graphic calculator to do that. <clears throat> so uh, first thing you need to do is go to the menu screen and press 2 for statistics. Uh, and then you go through some function buttons. So F5 for distributions, F5 again for binomial. And then you choose F3 for the inverse binomial. And once you've done that, it should, uh, sorry, and then F2 as well for uh, for the variable option. All right, and once you've done that, you should come up with this screen here. Um, it should say variable in the, the data tab at the top. Um, and what we need to do is fill in these values here. So uh, we need to note that the area that the calculator asks for is always the area to the left. So if you think of that bar graph that we looked at before, our tail was to the left. We wanted the probabilities on the left to add up to less than 5%, so less than 0 0.05. So it is the area to the left we want to be 0 0.05. So we're going to put area as 0 0.05 
the number of trials was 20 and our p was a quarter so they're both taken from our distribution and once you've done that enter those values in press execute and it should give you the value of 2 which is saying that the probability that x is less than or equal to 2 is about 0 0.05 um, now unfortunately uh, the function on this graphic calculator finds the value of x where the probability that x is less than or equal to that value is as close to 0 0.05 as possible um, now that's really useful in later problems in my sixth video on this topic but it's not what we want here we need the value of x uh, the probability of it being equal or less than that to be less than 0 0.05 so we have to go back and check that um, so we need to check that the probability that x is less than or equal to a, va a value of x is actually less than 0 0.05 not just as close to it as possible so um, we use the normal binomial cumulative uh, distribution function on the calculator uh, so head towards that you'll have used that before and um, you should come up with this screen and we need to find the that the probability uh, that x is less than or equal to 2. So lower value is 0, can't be any uh, less than 0 uh, greens. Uh, then upper value is 2, because we're looking for probability of x is less than or 2. Number of trials and p hasn't changed. And press execute and you should find that it comes out to be about 0 0.091. In fact, this should be 3, I think, shouldn't it, uh, if I'd rounded it correctly and um, but uh, that is clearly greater than 0 0.05 so unfortunately in fact this cannot be our critical region because our probability cumulative uh, probabilities have come out to be above five percent so what we now do is just check the value one below that so we're now going to check the probability that x is less than or equal to one so uh, go back to your uh, BCD function and this time upper value of 1 everything else stays the, ch the same and this time you should find out it comes out to be 0 0.0243 that is clearly below our 5% so even though this one might be closer uh, then this one is actually our uh, our critical region so we can say our critical region is x is less than or equal to 1 so our 1 would be our critical value, x being less than or equal to 1 is the critical region. So here shaded are, uh, is our critical region. Uh, remember that one's the critical value. This, remember, is what we would call the actual significance level. So although we were asked for a significance level of 5% what we've actually ended up with is an actual significance level of 0 0.0243 or 2.43% um, it always has to be less than 5% all right for most questions we'll talk about the others in my final video okay so thinking about how you would actually show your working out in a question because you wouldn't need to draw the graph out and things like that so first three steps uh, variable write down your hypotheses write down the assumption for the distribution all right um, we've used our calculator to find the probabilities that x is less than or equal to a few numbers the only two that you need to write down are the the one just below five percent and the one just above five percent so in this case, less than or equal to 1 or less than or equal to 2. All right. Because we want the one that's less than 5%, we would choose this one. So our critical region, we would say, is x is less than or equal to 1. All right. And it's worth putting in that this one is less than 5%. That one's greater than 5%, just for clarity. So now we've got our critical region. And if you remember, our critical region was the region within or the values of X within which if our test statistic fell in there, then there is evidence to reject the null hypothesis. In this case, our test statistic is two. All right. It says a green comes up twice. So for this one, and they, they were the results that we looked at earlier. So our test statistic 
is x equals 2. So what we can say is that 2 is greater than 1. It is not in the critical region. Hence, there is no evidence to reject h naught. And remember, this uh, decision here that we make is always a decision on whether or not to reject the null hypothesis. So we can say there is no evidence to reject h naught. What we then have to do is write that in context. So what does this mean in this example? Well, it means there, there is no evidence that the spinner is biased against green. And that's it really, that is a hypothesis test. Um, I just want to break it up into steps a bit uh, to help you. So there are basically six different uh, parts to these sorts of problems. The first one, you have to write down what the variable is. So x is the number of green results. The next one, you have to write down both hypotheses. The next one, the assumption, write down Assuming that the hypothesis, the null, sorry, hypothesis is correct, uh, we write down the distribution of our variable. Once we've done that, we use our calculator to work out the critical region. And then we can look at our test statistic and make a decision on the null hypothesis. And then the very final step is to write that decision in the context as a conclusion in the context of the problem. So six steps for this sort of question. And um, what you might want to do is come up with some sort of mnemonic to help you memorize those six steps. So V, H, A, C, D, C. Think of some words, a phrase with words that begin with those letters. OK, I'm going to look at a second example here. So it says the local train is usually late 60% of the time. Uh, it might be familiar to some of you. Uh, a new timetable is put in place and the company claims that it will be late less often. Um, out of the first 10 services of the new timetable, the train was late twice. Test the company's claim at the 5% level. So what we're going to do is work through these six steps. First thing, write down what the variable is. Well, the variable in this case is going to be the number of times that the train was late. Hypotheses. and null hypothesis has to assume that nothing's changed, that it's still late 60% of the time, i.e. the prob probability that it's late is 0.6. The alternative is what might be the case and what we're testing. In this case, we want to know whether it's late less often. So the probability of P is less than 0.6. So they are our hypotheses. Next one, assuming that this is true, we write down the assumption of what the distribution is of our random variable. So it's binomial. We're looking at 10 services Assuming that the null hypothesis is true, the probability that it's late is 0.6. We then use our calculator to work out the critical region, remembering that the sum of the probabilities of the values in the critical region must be less than 5%. So for this one, I found using my calculator that less than or equal to 2 comes out to be this. Uh, 0 0.0112, just under 5%. Uh, X is less than or equal to 3 is just over 0 0.00547. So it must be this one that we take. The critical region would be X is less than or equal to 2. <clears throat> we then look at our test statistic. Remember the test statistic is how many times it actually happens. So how many times was the train late? Well, it says the train was late twice. So our test statistic is two. And for this one, you can see that two is indeed less than or equal to two. It is in the critical region. So therefore, for this problem, there is evidence to reject the null hypothesis. And finally, we put that in uh, as a conclusion in the context of the problem so we can say there is evidence that the train is late less often uh, and that's it for that problem um, we'll do one more question that breaks up in a slightly different way 
<clears throat> so this one says a student hands in their assignment late on 40% of occasions. Hopefully this one is not familiar to you. Uh, their teacher puts a support plan in place to try to improve the situation. So if they're trying to improve the situation, then obviously we're hoping that the assignment will be handed in late or less, uh, less frequently. Sorry, less frequently. So a probability of less than 0 0.4. Uh, it says the teacher then observes how many of the next 20 assignments are handed in late. So first bit, write down the hypotheses used to test whether the teacher hope, teacher's hopes have been realised. So null hypothesis, we'd assume nothing has changed. Alternative hypothesis, what the teacher is hoping is things will improve, so the probability that it's handed in late will be less than 0 0.4. So they are the hypotheses. Next bit, find the critical region for a hypothesis test at a 5% level of significance. So back to our calculator and we should be able to find that the probability that x is less than or equal to 3 is 0.0159, just below 5%. Less than or equal to 4 is 0 0.0509, just over 5%. So our critical region must be this one here x is less than or equal to 3 and that is the working out that I would expect to see and what examiners would expect to see. Part C, write down the actual significance level of the test. <clears throat> actual significance level is the probability of x being in our critical region. So the probability that x is less than or equal to 3. It's basically the probability of 3, 2, 1 and 0 all added together but we don't need to do that because we've already got it here. So this is our actual significance level, uh, 0.0159. Last bit, <clears throat> the student hands in four of the next 20 assignments late. Comment on any conclusion that can be made in relation to the teacher's hopes. So four is our test statistic. It's the number of times that the student handed it in late. Um, is it in the critical region? Well, you can see critical region, x is less than or equal to 3. We've got x equals 4. So 4 is greater than 3. There is no evidence to reject the null hypothesis because 4 is not in the critical region. Put it in context, there is no evidence that the support plan has improved the situation. And that's it for that question. So in our next video, a similar one, we're going to look at what we call upper tail tests, which are very similar, but slightly different. And um, hopefully this one has helped you with lower tail tests.